for the solid waste board. Um, I'd like to mention that our chairman of many, many years has recently passed away. And I think it's appropriate that we just take a little moment of silence to remember everything that Pat O'Brien has brought to this committee. certainly miss him and his leadership moving forward for sure. Um, motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Public comments on the jurisdiction of the Solid Waste Board. We have, uh, please identify yourself and make your comments. Steve Bender. County Board Supervisor, District 13. I recently got this magazine, the number issue of Wisconsin counties. It's got a really nice article on Ken Mobile Park, uh, how we take great pride in it. And, you know, I started receiving calls like in June and July on how bad that park is actually run down. And I, I think we need to take ownership of that park. And I talked to the county exec trying to get money for the parks department to replace the trees and, and do some of the work out there. And he says that park belongs to solid waste, that we're not getting any money from the county. And I showed some of you the picture of the trees are dead, the trail needed to be sprayed, uh, the pond was completely, you could, a cat I think could have walked across that pond, that's how thick the weeds were. And solid waste paid $175,000 for that fishing dock that you can't fish off of because it's completely surrounded by weeds, you know, and that, the two directors have taken care of that. They're going to put, I think, a sonar in the pond and treat the weeds. But the trees need to be replaced. The evergreens need to be replaced. That the other smaller trees need to be replaced. And that money's got to come from somewhere. And Kenny served 42 years as a county board supervisor and on the Solid Waste Committee for years. I, I think we owe him the respect to take care of this park. And it's kind of like it's ironic that it's on your agenda today, and this park is in the magazine today. So it's kind of like Kenny saying, come on guys, take care of my park. You know, you built this for me, now let's take care of it. So hopefully we can get this resolved today and, and Solid Waste comes up with a little bit of money and we can get those evergreens replaced and the trees replaced. And the evergreens, all we have to do is put like three posts around them and some snow vents over the winter and the trees won't eat them or the deer won't eat the trees. You know, we, we have to take care of the park. I mean, it's, it's like we owe it to the man. And did it is on our agenda to discuss down the road. Has anybody got any more comments under public comment, or you want to hold them off until we get into that discussion phase? Okay, thanks for your comments. Steve, um, communication with solid waste board members. I will mention that um, John sent out a text. I don't know if I got it. Jim called me up at 7.30, said that he, his mother is sick, is that right? And he could not be here should we cancel the meeting. And at 7.30, it's like, I don't think there's time left to cancel the meeting. So um, this may not run as smooth as some of our meetings to run without John here, but I'm sure the girls can fill in for him well, so. Yeah, uh, I'd also like to make a comment about uh, Pat O'Brien. Uh, Pat O'Brien has not only been on the solid waste board, but was on the county board. And uh, I, I, I sent a, a, a message to the clerk to find out just how long the officials have been on the board. So when I searched the uh, minutes of past meetings, uh, I saw his full name as far back as 1987. 
And I saw the O'Brien name as far back as June of 1982. So it's, it's my uh, suspicion that he's been affiliated with the county for over 40 years, uh, as well as being the entire fire chief for the city of Nashville. And he's the one who's been getting in the room of the National Fire Rescue off the ground. We know a lot. He had a, a present that was bigger than life. And uh, uh, I always uh, uh, respected uh, his actions on the board, uh, on the county board, as well as on the solid waste board. We really miss him. Any other communications to be shared? With that uh, approval of the minutes of November 15th. So moved. And I would like to abstain from that vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Discussion action on general conservation. And I believe there's been some activities there. Is that something that you could share with us? Yeah, so, um, and unfortunately, with John being out and I was actually out on vacation last week, we didn't have a good opportunity to connect before the meeting. So I apologize. I'll be maybe someone a little bit too in terms of. Did you introduce so yourself? Oh, thank you. I'm Adam Brees. I'm the um, director of parks um, for Winnebago County. And actually, um, this is Kyle Virgin. He's our um, parks manager. Uh, he took over for Tom McGinnis, who was in that role for about 30 years. You've been director how long? Uh, since 2021. 2021. Thank you. Two and a half years. Um, so, yeah, I, I want to share, I guess, uh, what we're currently working on over at Ken Robo Park, help answer any questions. Um, I know typically Tom used to put together a bill every year um, with everything we've, we've worked on. We're still working through that because we actually did some late work um, with right before Thanksgiving. Um, we removed some dead trees out there, removed fencing, all the tree stakes that were on some of the trees that were large enough now that don't need the tree stakes. So there was about two or three days worth of work that we did out there in November that we're still compiling together as well. Um, I don't see the um, amount of work being much different than in years past. Um, looking back at some of Tom's previous um, um, hours that he put together for this committee um, and for John. So uh, we'll be working on that though within the next week or two. Um, I know I sent over a few pictures um, that I took right before I left for vacation. So this was right before um, Thanksgiving. Um, so they're relatively new pictures. I can just kind of go through um, to some of the things that we're seeing out at the park right now. Um, since uh, Kyle started in his role, we have had, we've put together a much more regular um, spraying schedule out there, spraying the trail um, and doing some maintenance out there. Um, that's just a picture. This is um, a, some of, no, you're good, actually. This is actually a, one of the problem areas that we're going to be working on um, over the next um, year. Um, this is on the other side of the pond from where the dock is. Um, there's basically a way down, um, and then there's, you can kind of see it there. there's a small little gray area. Um, that's like a concrete um, area that you can pitch off the shore um, and get closer. Um, so as you can see, there's definitely some erosion happening there. We need to work on those steps a little bit um, and come up with a plan and game plan. Kyle and I were talking about on our way over here. Originally, that was, those steps weren't in there. That was just a path all the way down to that pad. Um, yeah, as you can see up at top, <clears throat> That gets washed out because water comes down the hill and um, it hits a drain, but it also bypasses that drain to go to the lake. We did install those, um, I can't remember what Tom called them, but they were stoppers to try to prevent or get the water to flow to the edge. It helps, but as you can see, the stone gets kicked around. I um, mean, the stone fills in and then the water just goes over the top. So we're looking at other options to help alleviate that issue and um, prevent that from happening. Otherwise, it's just going to continue to be an issue with the washed out because that's the path of these resistance right now. It, just curious, and we wanted to have like a natural trail or whatever, but with the lake there and the hill right there, is it such a thing that we're in a 
concrete path there that the water can go right over the concrete? Then um, I think by doing that, uh, it's this trail gets used year round, so you might be creating an issue with ice. Okay. Um, and then that you're just going to ask for more problems. One of my thoughts was putting in an actual maybe a stone ditch, shallow ditch across the trail yep. and then putting in a wood um, walkway over the top of it and then getting that water to cross and then just ditching out and putting stone in the edge of that path and then that takes it right to okay. the water instead of running down the trail. That's one of our thoughts, but it's something that can be discussed further. Um, sorry, go not... There's another issue on the trail, kind of that same thing, and it's farther to uh, have we have a picture Jeff, of that. Jeff, idea. Well, yeah, let me ask just about the trail itself. I know we're trying to be natural, blah, 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 but footprints and I mean, you kind of got potholes and all of that. Is there, do you guys use gravel and whatnot to, to level that out on a regular basis or is it just well, left or whatever? From my understanding, when this was installed, um, the trail and the grass, it was supposed to be low to no maintenance. So low mow grass or no mow grass, which is grass that grows up and then it folds over. It almost looks like it's maintained, but it grows up and out. Um, that's not the case. We mow this, if it's during a decent year of rain, probably twice a month, maybe more. Um, the trail that was supposed to be that compacted, I believe, um, granite, and that wasn't supposed to allow weeds and stuff to grow. Obviously, weeds are going to grow wherever they can get started. So that's been a problem. Um, but talking with Adam and coming up with a maintenance plan, I think um, going through with a box drag or whatever and just creating the trail once a year, be it in the spring or the fall, and then re-rolling it, compacting it, I think that's going to help with um, the erosion, the potholes and stuff like that. We don't get too many potholes. I think you're seeing what's there, and that's just because of the washouts. Yeah. But everything, the rest of the trail is actually pretty solid. And one of the things we're looking at, but the application might be too large for this particular trail, is for like the Wyawash and Mesquite Trail, we have um, unbudgeted for trail groomer. That may or may not be too wide for this particular trail, um, but that's always potentially another option. Is you know, if it is a little wider, we could potentially look at widening the trail to people can utilize that. But that gets pulled behind our tractor um, once that's purchased. Um, and that does um, basically that grinds up the organics in the trail and then basically smooths it and flattens it back down. Uh, we're looking to run that on the larger uh, the 20 mile trail we have uh, once or twice a year. So, so that was approved in the budget? For you? That was approved in the budget for us, yeah. <clears throat> and this, well, I thought, I think you, you mentioned it, you just mentioned it really fast. It almost makes more sense to make this trail a little wider if need be. That way for next 20 years, you've got the right piece of equipment that you go in there and you level it when you're doing the right the large trail is that yep. what i kind of heard yeah and as long as as long as the turning radius i mean that'll be the big question because obviously our other trails are pretty much straight yep. it's gluten down yep. obviously have a bend but it's very very gradual bend um and here none of the trails are very it's not there's not a lot of sharp turns so we'll have to see how the equipment can work with our tractor um and that may be an option out here depending on the whip okay now we can go with that um, these are just the benches that are out there. Um, just um, if you guys recall, there was uh, Eagle Scout project. Actually, this might have been the, the Girl Scout. Um, I think those oh, old this was the Eagle Scout. This is the Eagle yep. Scout one. Um, so those benches are still out there. We are looking throughout our whole park system to eventually do concrete pads under all our benches so they're easier to mow around, easier to maintain. You're not having to spray under things. Um, whereas with the trail, we can actually have a sprayer on the back of like a gator, that type of piece of equipment and just run the trail. Um, so that just makes things more efficient. Um, but that's something we're working on in all of our park systems. So it's good. Concrete pads are huge. I did yeah. them at my resort yeah. 20 years ago, the best thing I ever did. And then you'll see, um, we're, gonna, we're starting with the community park, um, the Mike Norton bench that was installed out there. We did uh, that. And we have staff internally that we recently hired this summer that no concrete work, but we're able to do some of that work now. Um, just 
wanted to show you guys the signs that are currently out there. For the most part, all the lettering is um, holding up very well. You can see some of the coloring is, is fading a little bit. Um, you can see it on the birds a little bit. Um, but otherwise, um, all the signage, we do have to straighten a few of the signs just because of the tractor motor and that type of thing. But um, that's kind of the condition. Of, I just wanted to show the condition of the signs currently. Um, just some more trail pictures you'll see that um, we've been able, as you can see, the middle of the trail does not have the weed issues um, that they had, you know, even a year ago or two years ago uh, when I first started. Um, you can see that the trail starts growing a little bit, and that's where we're potentially widening the trail. Um, and that's something we can also partner with with Highway. Um, they do a lot of our trails. Like if we do decide to widen this trail, um, we could uh, partner with Highway. Uh, we can do some stuff internal, but they obviously do it a little bit more often, a little bit. The only difference is the cost of this might be different just because the material of this trail, like I said, I think it's the crushed granite. It's not the crushed limestone. So uh, I don't know off the top of my head what the cost, like cost difference is. Yep. But yeah, the, there's so if you're going to widen the trail, yeah, it's going to be, you're going to have to get that same material. And I think it's a question of whether or not, uh, you know, the group wants to continue with that color. Yeah. We could start to incorporate limestone in instead, um, which is more like the wild launch trail, the next school trail, or other gravel trails. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, I have no idea why we went with the granite, other than if that was recommended <laughs> by whoever was. It was recommended by the consultants and it had a binder in it. Um, I questioned that too when it first came up because the limestone seemed like it would be a good local material, but. That's what they came up with for this plan. Yep. So, and, and they aren't involved any Why? I mean, it had that color to it. You know, I mean, yep. you know, a lot of times engineers, architects, they look at that type of thing. We tend to look at more at the main side of it. So, yep. So yep. We can keep moving. Just more trail pictures. You can kind of see there are a little bit of running on each side of the trail. So that is something we're going to have to work on anyways. Is probably just because when we take a maintenance vehicle out there, it's obviously a lot quicker if we have a maintenance vehicle to be able to run and pull those tree stakes and that type of thing. So widening the trail from a maintenance standpoint wouldn't be a bad thing as well. Um, the next two pictures are the pond. Um, obviously, it's a little hard to see, you know, in terms of weeds and that type of thing, just because of the time of day, the reflection. Um, you can see a little bit of the shadow in there, but as um, Supervisor Bender mentioned, um, John and I actually did have aquatic biologists out there. Um, they're a company out of Fond du Lac um, that has treated our pond before. And um, they did go through the whole process. The DNR denied the permit for this fall, um, but they said that next late spring, early summer, uh, we can reapply. Um, and that just the type of aquatic, um, the, the type of plants there, they want it to be done during that time period. Um, so. We're still planning on doing that. We're planning on doing a sonar, which is a longer, it, it's about a 90 day process, um, but it lasts longer. Um, we've had good results with that at our uh, ponds in the parks. Um, so, could I just ask a question? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, you know, why would the DNR have ever turned down this? The per the, you mean the permit to the permit take had care to deal of with the weeds? Right? Yeah, like it had to deal with harming the. Um, the wildlife. I'd have to look back at the permits to what their purpose was or reasoning was. Had to deal with spawning periods and that type of thing and and you know, harming. And I apologize, I didn't bring that with me. Yeah, but so the idea is in the spring or early summer, it may not be <clears throat> good. No one correct at they, that time. Or correct. Or it's kind of like how um, we it. did the ground and bowl landing this year. They didn't let us work in the water until July because okay. of spawning period. I see. All right. So yeah. So we'll and that was about fifteen hundred dollars is what we're looking to spend there. Um, um, John did say that um, solid waste would take care of that cost. And then I just basically from the standpoint, we work with a lot of these contractors and do a lot of this. So we'll keep managing the work and managing the contract. Also, John, it doesn't have to go on John's plate. Um, just some more pictures of the trails. Um, we can keep moving forward. Um, so these, um, the white um, tubes are where saplings are planted. A lot of those, we're to, that's the next thing we're going to take a look at. I think a lot of them, if they haven't gone above the white yet, they're, a lot of them are dead within there. I mean, you would know a little bit more, but I did go around and look through a lot of those tubes. Um, obviously, once again, I think that the idea was planting the saplings. You could get more trees, but the problem is, in you know, just in terms of maintenance environment, there's more maintenance, there's more um, observation that has to be done. And they take obviously a lot longer um, to grow. So some of them will be able to stay, but that's why those some of those white are still out there because there's still some that are growing in there. Um, so it takes a while for a tree to grow. Um, so um, 
This is from the parking lot. You can see a little bit of weed coverage. We can see that it's brown. Um, it's because you know it, it is dead from the spring. Um, I think we just have one more. This one shows um, kind of what was mentioned about the, some of the evergreens. Um, it, we were having a lot of deer damage. Well, you know, it's kind of it's kind of a balance of it's a good thing that we have wildlife out in, in a park, and that's what we want out there. So, um, however, those trees most likely, as you can see, are going to be um, so most of them are going to be dying. Um, so we'll have to pull those and probably try different tree types out there. So I think you know, other than treating the pond, obviously the potential for widening a trail once we kind of look at more um, what the trail groomer can use the box blade um, with the exhibit, with the smaller um, attachment that we can use. Um, I think the next thing would be potentially tree plantings out there and assistance with helping with um, tree plantings and paying for trees. And um, like I mentioned, without John here though, um, but that's from our perspective, that would be the next need out there um, is replacing some of these trees. And we've had some discussions on deer and, and whether there's too many on the landscape and so forth. Um, <clears throat> if we're going to be planting trees, obviously, I think we need to look at fencing those trees until they have are well established. The other thing I'd love to see, and if there's any um, Boy Scouts out there looking for their eagle badge or whatever, let's try to plant some dead trees, if you will, just so that we have some rubbing trees out there. I mean, I use them on my hunting land. You want, you want deer where you can see them from your blind, Put a rubbing tree out there, put a stick out there with a rope hanging down and put a sign up there that lets people know that this is actually planted and why some of the, you know, during the rut, my neck swells up and I find myself scraping all over the place. So um, I think it could be quite an educational thing and the deer are likely to take the path of least least resistance. Let's let's give them some some log saplings, whatever, bury in the ground, and give them a, a place where they can do their thing. It might save us a couple of trees, or at the very least, they won't tear the chicken wire down trying to get at the ones we're hoping to grow. Yeah, no, it's, I don't know if that's a good, unique idea. And, and like I mentioned with the balance, I mean, we obviously want wildlife out of the park because it's a park. Yeah, we want to educate the public. Yeah, so I think that he said it's a great idea. Yeah. And just like to add, this is pretty brand new to us. Um, I guess we're in our third year, maybe. Um, we we hear all of your comments, Steve, but some of these problems are a little bit new, so we didn't anticipate the pond. We thought it would be wonderful. It's a fishing pond. The reality is after two or three weeks, every fish that had ever been accumulated in there was fished out, was taken home, Unless we're going to be stocking that pond, it probably is never ever going to be a fishing pond that I can foresee. Um, took 20 years for those fish to get established in there and nobody bothered them. Now it's a park. Um, so I think you're looking at a kayaking, uh, canoeing, whatever. We can make the pond look pretty, but in order to make it a fishing pond, you actually need some vegetation in there. You right. eliminate the vegetation, you kind of eliminate the, the fish in there. So, and we have heard, I have received comments from residents, um, not recently, but within my two and a half years here, that they have caught fish in the pond. So, there's definitely still fish in there. Um, now, you can always stock more to keep the population up, but um, there are definitely some in there now, at least from comments I've received. Yep. I would just add that uh, when Rob was our director, we did get numerous grants for five thousand dollars to stock fish. Like our ponds and stock fishing, they they basically wouldn't sustain without grant money. So we can get grants to, to stock the fish, I'm, providing we can get a line in the water. And yep, if you see the fish, yep, there's no way you can yep. get a line in that water. No, so it's it's definitely a work in progress, and I don't. 
I'd like to think the solid waste hasn't just dumped this in your lap. No, right? and that's why without John being here, I mean, I'll speak at least from my perspective. John's been great. Um, you know, when when we when I brought up about the weeds and um, he said, "Yep, absolutely, let's take yep. a look at it." And um, so that, he's been a great partner. Um, and I know two years ago, my first year here, um, we had some issues with the staff out there fall because we just had a rainy fall. A lot of um, users out at our the community park and the expo. And he sent a crew out there to help with a few things. So, I mean, I feel like we've had a good partnership um, from an operational standpoint. So, and yeah, a lot of the concerns are are already being addressed, and we'll continue to monitor them in the future. I guess I don't know if there's. I'm sorry. Sure. Um, okay. So the current status of the financing of the budget. Is it, is it, I can't recall if, is it half and half? Are we, whatever the budget is, we provide half funding for the maintenance? Was that like a five year plan? Or well, and that's, that's a question that, that I think the committees need to decide to or look at as well, because I don't, I have not been able to find on a county board, um, at least from, from my, my committee's perspective, that um, a county board agenda where a MOU or something was approved. Um, from a park standpoint, because my stuff goes through county board. Um, so I don't know if there really truly is anything that was official or if it was just kind of verbal. I know I believe documents. that it was some official action probably would predate you though. Yes, it was. I think it was been, been my time. That's been on the, on the parks committee for eight years and we never signed that MOU. And I tried to get the money from John Damel in July to fix these streets. And John Damel told me that this park belongs to Solid Waste and the parks department will not pay for any more expenses to the park. Yep. So that's what we need to basically clarify. Right. Is you, you heard the projects that need to be done, but the question is who's going to pay for them? Yeah. Yep. And that's, yeah, it's unfortunate John is not here, but historically, I mean, this, we've been through more than this predates COVID, does it? Not oh, it does. We, we've yeah. always been yeah. four or five. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. What's the yeah. July of 2018? Yeah. yeah. So the point is, and, and leading up to that, it took three years, maybe. Potentially to, for it to be from the from the beginning to all the time it was, and there was a lot of discussion. But the the, the point here that I think was vitally important was that if the Solid Waste Board was going to invest a million and a half or whatever it is we invested in them, we darn well better use it. We darn well better have a professional park maintenance plan. Mm -hmm. And a professional um, promotion of it. I mean that there's no there's no point for us to spend that money unless we have the payoff at the end, which is people are using it now. And, 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 and to that point, um, I know our, so we have a program marketing coordinator since I got here. We actually hired a program marketing coordinator. Really, we kind of switched the position a little bit. Um, you'll see Ken Robel on there and also Bago, uh, our reactive go aside program that we've been promoting this year. Um, we did have an event or two out of Ken Robel. Um, part of that is trying to get people out there. Uh, there was like a search for um, leprechaun coins out there, I think last February. Um, when I've been out there, actually, I've seen people walking pretty much every time I'm out there. Someone's parked, they're walking the trail. Um, actually, I was out there with um, Chairman Powers of the Parks Committee. Um, looking around at the park, um, someone was out there playing Pokemon Go, um, looking for Pokemon out there, just Pokemon Stop. Um, so there, there's definitely um, activity out there, yeah. and I think we want to keep pushing the activity out there. Yeah. And at least from my perspective, I think it's a great, I think when I first got here and I looked at all the different signs, the educational aspect of it that you basically can convert, you know, and obviously I've seen it up in Wausau where they converted a whole landfill basically to a huge soccer complex. Um, and so I think it's a really good example of how we can utilize that land after, you know, after the fact when it has, yeah. the rest has to set. So, um, and the reason I bring up that history, because that history is important because it kind of leads to the current, is the history was that there was this big debate about who's, who owns it and who's going to promote it. And I'll be honest with you, it was not like the park department was, oh, God, we're glad to have it. It was almost like a begrudging, okay, well, maybe try to blah, blah, blah. I want us to get past that. Yeah. I want us to get into a new cooperative agreement where this thing is maximized. That's the whole thing. And if it means the solid waste board has to kick in some money, 
so be it. I understand that it's a unique thing that we we developed it and whatever. And whatever the partnership is, I thought it was a 50-50 thing. And I thought that actually made a lot of sense because everybody's got skin in the game. And but if we've got to kick in 50 grand or something, for God's sakes, we spent the money on the on the park. Let's just make this thing what it should be. It's embarrassing for us to have to for, for our name to be able to capture something and you, you too, right? Nobody wants to be embarrassed by something they own, right? Not and, being and, and that's why Kyle and I have worked on, you know, yep. that's why the trail's now yep. looking better. And I think from our perspective, at least from a staff's perspective, I feel like uh, we've got a more regular plan going. Uh, we have the sweat equity into it from the parks standpoint. Like when I talked to John a little bit, it's more those. And to, to speak to Supervisor the business point about budget, it's more those larger items, the treatment of the pond, the, if we have to widen the trail, you know, those types of things. If we're able to get assistance with those types of things, we're willing to do the labor and the work. Yep. Yep. Um, perfect. So I think that's all right. kind of where. So I don't know. Yeah. We'll have to decide what the next yep. step is. I believe. I believe there was some agreement that was put together. John could probably share that. And I have found that with uh, Jerry Finch's name on and Pat's name on it, and then the two directors. But okay. nothing necessarily like and, a resolution or anything like that. And anymore. quite honestly, that agreement was kind of made before we were into the middle of maintaining it. There's a lot of stuff that's come and gone in those three years. If that agreement has to be re looked at or talked about, <laughs> I think we're all on board we didn't exactly know what we were getting into right. then we've got a much clearer idea now um the other thing i just I just mentioned i did talk to one of the neighbors concerning uh, just how significant the deer issues were and so forth and what came up he said i don't know who nobody ever closes that gate there and he said there are cars driving around that trail at 11, 12 at night. He said, I have no idea where they're going or what they're up to. I yeah. can't believe. He said, it might be as simple as they're shining the deer that are hanging around there, but he just wanted to let me know. And I'm just sharing that um, as we go forward and look at it. And I'm not expecting the parks to come and close the gate. I guess I'm wondering why our people don't lock the gate at 10 at night or something like that at that. So it's just one other tidbit as we move forward with it too. Um, Doug, if, if you don't mind in response to that, that exterior gate is on a timer. Okay. And, and in the past, it has been open and closed. It closed at 11 o'clock at night and opened at 7. Um, because I know when we were over there in the trailer, um, when this office was being remodeled, there were times when we had a key in to get into that first gate. So it could be that the timer is off now, or it's on daily you know, savings time, or it's not functioning. It's certainly something that we can look into to make sure. Yeah, the guy that's driving around that trail is in there when the gate closes. That we know the heck it is. <laughs> Yeah, and because our park system is open from 7 to 11 for the most part. Yeah, and okay. our runs the Full landings a little bit earlier, so. Yeah, yeah gotcha. Gotcha. All righty. Um, Ms. Tumin, Ms. Paul? Well, I've been around in the three since the uh, decision and the planning for the uh, park has been under consideration. And in the process, uh, we got advice from our uh, landfill advisors, we invited our planners to our meeting and heard their recommendations and examined their plans for going forward with the concept of the conservation park. And then we 
you've got bids and you've got construction uh, of the park, every step of the way, we've had a commercial input, a commercial advisor in going forward. And as we're uh, approaching a critical uh, reassessment of the park, it may be a good consideration to have a commercial advisor provide us with an assessment uh, which would likely include what our parks maintenance partner uh, has uh, presented to us. But going back to the time that I came on this board, so much of the board's activity has been independent and uh, decisions made around the solid waste board table, uh, it's a, it's truly a transition uh, for the last few years uh, that so much of uh, the county board input uh, is, and other department inputs are taken into our decision making. So I would just like to, uh, Put on the table. Simply, I don't foresee any action today. Uh, but I would put on the table uh, the idea uh, of a uh, commercial advisor assessment uh, come this uh, spring, and uh, this would give us a roadmap uh, to design uh, a plan with our parks partner uh, in going forward. Uh, but this would bring us back to the uh, new beginning uh, and it allow us to go first, go, go, go forward uh, with a more realistic uh, responsibility for the financial aspects of the park. And I appreciate your comments and I hear where you're coming from. Just being, being a laborer my whole life, I got, I myself have a little bit more faith than those two guys to tell us what to do moving forward than to have yet another consultant charge us a lot of money to tell us how they should be doing their job. That's just my personal opinion as we're discussing. I, I would kind of agree with you. When you say a, a commercial advisor, I assume you're talking about a, a consultant. Well, yeah, Parks, uh, and, go back to the people that uh, advised us on uh, designing I, it and installing it and getting it started. Uh, I, I think we'd do better if we talk, you know, if we had John and and uh, the park director work together on it rather than you can see some of the problems that we've got are uh, consultant and planning problems. Uh, the trees, for example, uh, the trail, instead of putting in limestone that matched all of the other trails, they put in a <clears throat> or this red granite that's a, that's a odd you know, uh, uh, material. And uh, so I think we'd be better off to listen to our own people and have them work together and see what we can come up with. Well, I kind of get the, uh, uh, I can kind of get the uh, uh, vibes uh, that, that this uh, maintenance of King Robo is a burden uh, to the Parks Department. Uh, it's a burden to their 
uh, overall responsibility, uh, it's a financial burden, uh, it's a uh, employee labor burden, and uh, uh, I, I would be uh, from the history that I uh, have seen develop over the years. Uh, we've always uh, uh, have been successful uh, with our uh, uh, consulting partners. Uh, we're certainly not taking anything away from the parks, uh, but we're relieving them of the of the stress uh, and the burden uh, of uh, resolving questions. Uh, that are ongoing and uh, uh, cumulative. Well, I, you know, early on, if I recall, <clears throat> there was resistance on the part of the parks committee. I was on the parks committee, and the, my part. resistance was we had no financial backing. You know, we our playground equipment is thirty years old. We've got a life expectancy of twenty five. We got two pavilions that need to be replaced. We cannot get any money from the county board to, to do the work we need with the existing properties we have. And like I told Robbie, we're not opposed to cutting the grass and doing some of the labor work. We don't have the resources like to, to fix that trail where the washouts are. We don't have the money to replace the trees. We don't have the money to, to keep up with the pond. It's not that we don't want. Kenny Robo deserves a quality park. He, he basically served on this county board for 42 years. And the way that park looks is a disservice to that man. But we don't have the resources in the parks department to fix the park. Solid waste does. So if we want to fix the park, the money has to come from solid waste. We can do the labor. We can get that in our labor budget. But we have no money to replace the trees. We have no money to, to shock the, the pond. And we have no money. Limestone is like $6 a ton, and granite's 35 You know, we don't, we don't have money for that. Yeah, who is that? That one. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, this, our uh, discussion this morning is probably the most cooperative that uh, I have heard from the parks yep. end of it. And if you and John are working together. Uh, that's the way I'd like to see it go. Yep. But, but I'm just going to say this: I do believe the board has to weigh in about what our what our strategy is, what our attitude is, yeah. whether we can't, John can't be negotiating something right. or he doesn't know what we're, yeah. so we need to, we need to sit down and this is all I've ever wanted is, is the quiet, is the sitting down at a, at a meeting with somebody who's on the parks committee and the, and the parks maintenance folks and go, oh, let's figure this out, Christ, this is what we're here to do. We're here to solve problems. We're here to make something that, it, I mean, with all respect, I understand you didn't have, but we also gave the county essentially a million and a half dollar park. I mean, that's a nice asset to be handed, right? So this this is this is what politics is. This is what the way we're supposed to do is sit down and figure out let's max, let's absolutely maximize the value of this. We both invest something and and move forward. I'm, with all respect, Paul. The consultants were appropriate to maybe put the thing together. The parks department didn't have the resources to plan to put together a park. And if you remember, we had Eileen McCoy, the, the, the former parks director from Nina, that we recruited to help oversee and be the person that was sort of the eyes and ears of the of the um, of the solid waste board, separate from the consultant that we hired. Right. So that was she was. And I think all of that, she was instrumental in a lot of the things that we did. Let's get an agreement. Let's cooperate. That's what this is about. I don't, where the money is with all respect, you know, I, I, you guys have some skin in the game. We do. I'm more than willing. Let's sit down, put it on the next agenda when John is here, figure this stuff break out yep. and move on. And it's, it's just, geez. We also do have a new parks director that right. is right. new, prior new. Um, I don't I don't feel the pushback that you guys are willing or able to do it. I don't, I feel it from Steve. Steve, we 
whispers in my ear at every county board meeting how, how bad it is. And I, I think he exaggerates a little bit, just my personal opinion, and I like him to death. But um, in our pride, we, we think those pictures don't look that bad. <laughs> there you go. Yep. So you and John work it out, and we welcome you to any meetings, just having you here so that we can get some answers. Um, in the past, we kind of, it was, it didn't work as good as this system does of having you here. If you and John got a plan, I'd love both of you to come and share the plan with us. And um, quite honestly, the, the solid waste is in a fairly good financial status. We spend a lot of money to maintain that hill and we will be spending a lot in the future to spend a little to make that park look nice. I don't think is a huge problem. Any other discussion? Well, I, I like, you know, I've, I've only been on the board for two years, so my history of this doesn't go back even as far as yours, all right? But, you know, what I've seen in the past two years is cooperation between the true groups, you know, pretty well. And if we have to do something, you know, making the trails wider so that it fits the equipment that you have, to make your job easier, you know, I think that's things that we just we just need to do. We just need to do that, you know. And just we want to make it easier for everybody to maintain the park. Simple as that. So any other discussion? Then we're Going to move on to the next item. If you guys want to bail, it gets really boring from here. So. We have to meet someone at the actual time. So okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you in a week. There you go. Thanks for including it in the form of the park. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Discussion action on the standard solid waste recycling rate schedule. Absolutely. So Cassie will bring it up on the screen here. Every year um, we take a look at our rates um, and uh, have make recommendations for uh, tipping fee rate changes or our material acceptance um, changes on, on our rate sheet. Um, so the the uh, to start here for 2024, the general refuse um the rate is going up from 50, 52, $52 per ton to $56 per ton. That was decided um, at a meeting over the summer with the Solid Waste Management Board. So that one's already set. Yeah, can I just, what, one sure. thing that always, I thought maybe I bring it up every year, but I really, really, really wish we could have the previous year's rate right next to the current rate. Oh, okay. Okay, just every time we see this, I never know what we're, um, compared to what? Yeah, compared to what? So I would okay. appreciate that. I think the sure. municipal partners would appreciate it. So they, because, you know, they, they, they have to put That way you can see exactly how much yeah. it changes. I would yep. appreciate that. Well, for, for today's purposes, I will tell you what the Fine. last year's rate was. Yeah. Um, minimum fee 2023 was $20 per load, 2024, no, no change. Um, construction demolition waste was $52 per ton. Um, it's going up to 56. That's part of that, that decision that was made in August. Minimum fee, again, no change. The asphalt shingles, $56 per ton. Um, last year, or 2023, was um, 52 per ton. The out-of-county rate for general refuse, construction, demolition, and shingles. This is a new category, and this is a compliance, or I should say, um, getting all bow partners on the same page. Um, within the bow agreement, Outagamie and Brown County, Outagamie already charges an out of county fee. Brown County is moving in that direction. Winnebago County is moving in that direction. So, what this applies for is any tonnage that comes in outside of the Brown Outagamie Winnebago County system. And all it is is an additional $2 charge 
Allegheny County is charging that same rate, $58 per ton, and they have that same out of county category. So we're talking Bonlac County brings something here that they $58 get. $58 per ton. Yeah, okay. Paul. Paul. Now, isn't the 56 uh, coordinated with the uh, ball system? Yes, 56 is the same well, rate. That's, that... where, that's where we got that number from because we jumped all the way from 46 to uh, 52. Correct. Yeah, we had to make some some larger increases, and part of that was trying to to regulate and, and, and become at the same level or something. Wanted to, us to, to be equal with the others and not to have a lower rate. Exactly, and that'll help control um, any backflow that we may have gotten out of the Appleton area because we had a cheaper tipping fee than out of the other county had. Um, so um, as I explained that Oda County is, is 58, it's a new category. Um, we'll be able to, we're set up at the scale to manage it quite well. We, we already asked for origin or where that material is coming from. So it doesn't really change anything for our scale operators other than we have a, a, a new code for the actual material type. Um, um, for brush, um, in the past, this category was labeled yard waste and brush. Um, what we're doing with taking yard waste out of that category is uh, eliminating an issue that we've seen over the last few years. Um, because the brush tipping fee is less than our general waste, people have brought yard waste as in yard furniture and stone and um, yard toys, and they were calling it yard waste. And it's not, the intent of this is for brush. The material that's actually banned from landfill disposal. That's a stretch. So <laughs> we're getting rid of yard waste and just calling it brush six, inch, six inches in diameter or less, leaves and grass. Very descriptive. It's exactly what's going to be accepted for $35 per ton. Now, 2023's rate was $34 per ton. I'm recommending a dollar increase on that because of what I presented at our last meeting regarding our switch to the outlet for our yard waste. Minimum fee for um, brush is $10 per load. Um, that is something that we had put into effect, I believe, last year, um, just to make sure that the people who are just bringing in two leaves, you know, two bags of leaves or a couple bags of leaves can come in and still get a decent rate rather than paying a full $20 for the load. Um, single stream recycling, commercially collected, um, that rate, rate changes monthly. It's based on the MRFs tipping fees and processing fees. And so um, we asked our commercial haulers if they're going to be bringing in commercial loads that if they want to know our tipping fee is, it's going to be changing monthly and they need to call and, and get that, that right rather than trying to post and update this sheet every single month. Um, contamination fee at $50 uh, per instance, it's per ton right now as it's listed. Uh, that is uh, an assessment or a fee that we began uh, using uh, over the last two to three years. And it specifically has been used for commercial recycling loads that come in extremely contaminated. Um, my equipment operators have to spend additional time to grab trash out of the recycling and take it over to the recycling for the, the waste side of the transportation. It eats up time, it's use of equipment. Um, it allows us. A, you know, a penalty that we can impose on haulers that continually bring in bad recycling. And that's typically how uh, that one is applied. So no change to that. I don't recall why it's highlighted, but no change to that. Um, late unload fee. This is a new category that we would like to add. Um, this brings us um, to aligning more with our Brown and Outagamie County partners. Uh, currently, Brown County has late fee um, for uh, scale operations. If, if vehicles or customers are coming in at, at the time the gate closes, and if it takes them more than 15 minutes to unload, there's actually a late fee that Brown County charges. And that's because staff has to stick around additional time to make sure that they can, you know, close up and get that person out of there. Um, we have seen an increase, and Cassie can go into more detail on this, but we have seen an increase in instances of people coming in at 3 o'clock, they scale in, and then they take the time to unload and getting out of here at 3, 4, 5, 4 o'clock in the afternoon when our operations 
and people are leaving our staff and are scheduled until 3 15 and 3 30. So, so let, me, let me ask a question when you say people, are we talking about regular? Just contractors and such. Are we talking about municipalities are coming in? Oh, now? it's it's contractors and single car loans coming okay, in. Okay, not so, not our municipal partners. No, partners. certainly not our municipal partners. We would address that differently if it were them. Cassie. I mean, I guess Kathy kind of explained it. It's been an ongoing issue, and it's becoming increasingly worse. Um, quite a few times this summer, we allow people to come in if they're in line until th up until three o'clock when we close. We allow them in our gates to unload. Um, we have people coming in and they're just taking their sweet time unloading. Um, we let them know we close at three. We still allow them to come in and unload. Um, but people are coming in with full, huge U-Hauls and taking an hour to unload. Um, and it's, again, like Kathy stated, we have to have staff stay, um, close out the register. if We have to come back and reway. Um, so it's just like there's no good gauge um, to do that. Um, I believe out of Amy County has where they cut off reways at 245 at their scale. Um, they don't have a late fee, but they do have a cutoff time where we discussed that internally with us. And we thought, you know, there's people who come at 245 who have their empty weight slip, who are very quick, efficient, get in, get out. So we don't want to penalize those people. That's why we're leaning towards and requesting more geared towards what Brown County does, um, having that late fee. Um, people can still come in up until three o'clock. We'll give them 15 minutes leeway to come in, unload, come back in line and reway within that time frame. Um, beyond that, they will be charged a penalty uh, or a late fee per 15 minute increment of that takes them to unload. So what um, what our Brown County partner does, they, they charge $25 per 15 minutes after the first 15 minutes, basically. So if somebody scales in three o'clock, they're unloading, they scale out before 3.15, no charge, no late fee charge. If they scale out at 3.20, now they're gonna be charged $25. And then it increases every 15 minutes. Um, we've discussed this internally in staff. Um, John has weighed in on it too via email here. Um, he couldn't be here today, obviously, but um, John has said, potentially $50 per 15 minutes. Um, but certainly if we wanted to align with our county partner, Brown County, um, we could do $25 per 15 minutes. Um, we want it to be you know, a, a penalty that gets people motivated to get in and out in a timely manner, but we don't want it to be so so harsh that the person who weighs out at 316 is like, you know, like I almost made it or somebody does something, you know, like gets hurt because they're rushing too much. Um, out of Gamey County is considering a late fee, uh, but at this time they're evaluating their relay system and trying to tweak that system before they go full, full fledged or fully into a late fee system. They wanna see how it continues to work for Brown County. And if we at Winnebago would do it too, they wanna see how it's working out um, with us. Um, we did ask Brown County, well, how many uh, late fee charges at the waste transfer station um, did you have in 2023? They had 49 customers throughout the year that um, were charged the late fee at their transfer station. Now, that's they handle, I would say, probably twice to three times as much material as we handle. So they're a lot busier than us. So I don't see this being a huge issue, but we will likely, I would say 15, 20 people per year may end up with it. Um, we also asked about pushback and Brown County just doesn't get much pushback um, on this at all. Whereas when we asked um, Otagami County how their policy sits with their customers, they do get um, pushback from their customers. And it's mostly customers who say, well, how can you, you know, I can unload this in 10 minutes. And it's like, no, it's clearly a full trailer. And so it begins an argument that, you know, now we have to make a judgment call of how long it's actually going to take to unload this load. Um, the other thing that Audi Gamey County said was a con is that enforcement can vary among staff because it's not, I mean, it's the signs out, but the people who don't want to get the pushback and have that argument aren't going to try to enforce that. Um, so with this fee sheet and open for discussion, of course, we are, I guess, putting it out there, potentially having a late unload fee um, and then potentially $25 per 15 minutes or $50 per 15 minutes. 
What, what is the actual cost, the actual operating cost when staff has to stay over? You can talk about overtime and, and other expenses. So if, if we make it 25 an hour, we, we want it somewhat punitive. But I also don't want to set it so low that we're not covering that overtime. Sure. So what does that look like? Um, well, if we get into a situation where that happens and a person has hand unloading, Really, all we need is a one scale operator here for 15 minutes, a half hour, or however long it takes. Um, overtime is time and a half. I don't mm -hmm. so like $30 an hour, give or take. With benefits? Yeah, with benefits. And, and we're what, 30% on to that, I would say. Yeah, so I think probably geared towards $50 an hour would be more realistic after if you include benefits and time and a half and everything. Yeah. So twenty five for twenty five dollars for fifteen minutes would cover our actual cost. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, if we get into a situation where they're in the transfer station, well, now we have to have at least one equipment operator on hand to push up the load and to close out the transfer station after hours. So, and then equipment operation and and equipment operator makes more. So. You know, no situations, you know, we may be falling behind, but we don't see it as being as much of a problem in the transfer station unless trigger breaks down. And then it's like, okay, we're doing the difference. Yeah. Yeah. And when these uh, employees have to stay over, say, 15 minutes, do they get paid overtime for the just the actual time they're here, or do they get a minimum of two hours? They just get paid for the time that they're here. Just 15 minutes. Yep. Okay. Because I know some union contracts have a minimum of two hours. Yeah. Or... Unfortunately, no, we don't have that. I just, uh, I wouldn't get stopped by a cop if I get a warning. I really like that cop a lot when I get a ticket. I just hate the whole police department. Is there such a thing, if, if we're talking about give or take 20 times a year that this is going to happen. There's such a thing before we move into it that we just have a slip there that says we will be charging a late fee uh, three months down the road or six months down the road. And, and if, if you, and I don't know if the people are, can they give one warning first and, <laughs> and we know who it is or I I think a lot of I, I got nothing against the twenty five dollar fee. I just like to see us try to do a little bit of educating first. Sure. I gotta believe nine times out of ten, it's the same twenty people that you know, I can still make it if I hurry. And you, yeah. <laughs> um, I think if we educate those people, this problem would get much smaller. Than just my thought, but. Well, um, I think having the the uh, threat or implication of there being a leak be out there, and yep. certainly, you know, we can we can work our way into it a little more easily and just say, hey, by the way, you have fifteen minutes. Um, you know, there is a late fee out there and then potentially waive it the first time or within the first yep. three months or six months or however long we feel is a good grace period. Um but certainly, yeah, there are a few regulars who who have pushed that yep. a few times now. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm just wondering if we we start with a little bit of signage that says yes. any loads not completed by 315 will receive a $25 yeah, late yeah. fee. If this is approved, I definitely would put signage out now. So okay. people are seeing it in the scale office. This is taking effect, you know, next year, be aware. Um, you know, we can kind of educate as people are coming in now as well and let them know going forward next year, this will be the implications if you continue to come late and stay late. Okay. And, and so the, the, it isn't listed there, but if we approve it, if we approve this in its entirety, you're, that would also include a $25 late fee that you can start to implement a little bit at your discretion and maybe we try to scare the heck out of them first for a couple of months. Yes, um, the intent with leaving it blank was because we, we wanted there to be discussion of how much it would be. Um, if, if we decide it's going to be, it's going to be um, 
uh, added to the fee sheet, it would be whatever the board decides at $25 per 15 minute increment. That's what we'll fill in for this blank. And then the plan going forward would be to have a soft start of this program, yep. give plenty of warning uh, verbally, or allow people, first of all, as we work into the plan, um, having the signs up effective, you know, spring of 2024, let's say, um, this will be um, applied, this late fee will be applied, making sure that we're, I guess, enforcing it softly at first. And giving people plenty of warning when they actually get here verbally, no customer it shouldn't, it will not be a surprise to any customer. We will make sure that they are told that this has to, you have to be weighed back out by 315 because there is a late fee um, that we will charge. And of course, like I said, we, we, I mean, we give people plenty of chances and it's no, not our plan to just have this happen, drop, drop it. And it's like it's happening. We're, we're not, I mean, let me start over. I don't, I wouldn't see it as having a hard enforcement at first. Enforcement at first. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Just speaking for myself, I think $25 is quite sufficient to get the message through. I think 50 would be excessive in my opinion. Um, we have to go to 50. We'll do that down the road, but I, purpose of moving forward, i just like to um, state that I think the $25 fee is where that late fee should be if we do have to enforce it down the road. Okay. There, you looking for a motion? Not, I, not yet. I, I guess I'd like to get through the entire fee sheet. And oh, then I'm then sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, so sorry. this one needs a little bit of nuance. I don't know that we can, in other words, I guess we can do the whole speech, but this one I think has got to have some. Are you looking for like official language that would be on this to explain well, exactly more what's going the to context of, you know, yeah, so dollar amount, start date sign it, you know, whatever that I think just to, to have the board sort of agree. I think like April 1st, right? Okay. I think that to me is a perfect date to start in January. Okay. Yeah, and, and so on. So I'd like to, you know, include that if you want to include that in the big motion. Yeah, yeah, fine. I think we'll go ahead. Yeah, I, I would appreciate that. Um, um, moving on, the other fees that I've listed that are not highlighted, there's no change. So these are the exact same fees that were were set in 2023. So if you don't mind, I would like to jump down to the latex paint since there's no change to anything above it. Starting April 1st, 2024, and that's the same language that we can use above that if we need to on that late fee. Um, user must empty into collection paint, which we discussed as I presented it. A dollar per, per gallon, which is also what I had recommended. Can we put a camera out there and then, and then play, play the, <laughs> some of the stuff back so we can watch some of the people out there? <laughs> sure. and splash it around with their paint. That would be kind of fun. Sure. Um, moving down to computer electronics, I added the word uh, the words miscellaneous accessories to this because the DNR made a few changes to the actual law and they're allowing um, a lot of the other miscellaneous accessories that now come that are Bluetooth enabled. So um, there's a whole list of additional items and that's something that if it's related to a cell phone or a PlayStation gaming device, it's going to be included in the miscellaneous accessory. Oh, yeah. Moving back to the latex, now the, the dollar a gallon fee mm -hmm. includes for the disposal of the gallon can. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we wouldn't charge any extra for that. <laughs> okay. They dump it here on site and then there's a dumpster right next to where the paint collection is. And then they, just like we handle the oil collection, they, they pour the oil into a tank and then that empty container just goes in a dumpster without any additional charge. The bar. Okay, that is a bar, yeah. Um, and then on the back, uh, just wanted to highlight uh, the description for Outer County and a general refuse construction demolition shangle waste source from outside of Winnebago, Outer County, Brown Counties. So it's no surprise to customers. 
the late unload fee, we will tweak the language to make sure that um, it's explained that the first 15 minutes in the grace period, uh, fee starts 15, you know, 15 past the hour and it, at increments of 15 minutes. Um, the facility information last year's and previous fee sheet had uh, a fee for tarps listed. So the language was tarps available to purchase for $5 fee. Um, I'm recommending a change in that to say at scale because the cost of tarps and vests is going up and I don't want to lock in a $5 fee when we're when we're paying $6 per tarp fee to yep. be able to sell yep. those at our scale. Um, so those are uh, safety vests and the uh, tarping costs change to just purchase at scale. And then um, the third, so there regarding the uh, duty use of compactors hauling limitations, I just wanted to put a few more items on here um, to leave it up to our discretion. The boats is it's something you'd be surprised how many people show up with a boat and want to dispose of it here. And unfortunately, most boats we can't send through a compactor. Like a canoe, I'll allow the guys to break the canoe down or a John boat down and put that through the compactor. But any bigger, larger boats, I just don't want to have to try to get that broken down. Various oversized items. It allows our staff and management here to make a decision whether an item is going to damage our compactor or whether um, it may puncture holes in the trailers that we use for our vendor. So I just want to make sure that, that we're allowed to make that decision and somebody doesn't come back and say it wasn't listed. I can go back on, excuse me. Can we go back to the tarps of this day? Sure. I, I think I have a problem with that. Uh, the the tarp is available at scale. Uh, I would I would make it a dollarized, and it, because it's really a penalty. It's a penalty not only that you don't that this is the rule you have to have a tarp to come through the city streets, but if, if they're because they don't have a tarp, that it's going to be going off for the city to take care of city and the county to take care of all the, the trash that's along the, the streets because they did not have a tarp on their. So I I take it up to ten bucks. Personally. Oh, so you're recommending instead of putting at scale, just yeah. increasing the fee to ten dollars? It's, a, it's a penalty. Number? It is a penalty. What what is the benefit of the tarp once they're here? I mean, like Jim just said, they've already driven across the county, perhaps, and and screwing their stuff everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then at the last minute, we're saying, okay, now. You know, it's like an hour after the rain, we're going to have you put a raincoat on <laughs> if you're already wet. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that, but. Our customers have had the same yeah. argument, and, yeah. and it's county ordinance, so we're trying to make sure we're complying. Our rules comply with county ordinance, and I believe it was, it's like Trans 305 or one of the transportation laws that's out there for secure. Yeah, and, and I agree, but I, I agree with Jim. Yeah. It should be more of a penalty than it should be a similar price that you could have bought it at Fleet Farm. It should be cheaper at Fleet Farm so that so that they say, oh, I'm going to do it ahead of time, and I'm going to cover my load, and you know. In my opinion. Oh, yeah. That's uh, anybody who says I'm coming down, I got some brush to take down. I said, Get sure to solve a tarp. If you don't have one, buy it now because otherwise you're going to pay to go and rain it. I tell people to do that. They yep. do it. Yeah. Okay. I'd agree to it. Yeah. That's it. Uh, you said that's a county ordinance, but there's no penalty in the ordinance, is there? I believe there's a, like, if they were to get pulled over and picketed, I think it's like a $50 fine. Yeah, I think there's a fine involved. Mm -hmm. There is. It's a Stopped by a, an by officer, a yeah. We're saving them money. Right. Maybe we should have a sizing for the sheriff's yeah. department yeah. if they should be looking for these people. It's <laughs> <laughs> for me or not, I, anybody disagree with raising it up to $10. I mean, we can make it as a motion or we can just include that in the, in the entire motion. Mm -hmm. What is the charge of the tarp now? Five dollars. Yeah. So I've cost us six. So we're going to sell it for ten. But it's not. Are we going to give them a tarp for ten bucks, or just charge them? We give them a tarp because then if they come in future use, they have a tarp to utilize. If their excuse is they don't have a tarp, yeah. I would I would support a ten dollar tarp fee. Um, I think that 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 makes sense. I I didn't necessarily want to throw. Bigger numbers out there. I mean, still, we can still just barely make the five dollars, but um, you know, it, it's going to be over that. I'm sure. I could see somebody with like twenty tarps that we sold them. You know, like yeah. put in their storage unit that they never use. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a customer. 
yes, we do have a customer like that. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> Some case. <laughs> and for vests, we, uh, the vests we're getting close, but uh, the vests are specialized only for people who are unloading at the transfer station that don't have yeah. high vis. So there's, oh. it's more for our operations. Sure, and roughly safety. what it cost us. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Is that okay. yeah, yeah. That's it. That's we're it for that one. So, make the most. so now we're looking for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chip, 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 Chip. Okay. All right. We will. Uh, we will make a motion to approve the uh, all of the fees uh, for twenty twenty four as listed. Um, and, and well, and to deal with the the late fee on the lower, as you explained, I think the most the minutes. Kathy also does a good job of explaining all of that. But yeah, that with that, um, that the fee, that late fee would be $25 for every 15 minutes after 315 and would be implemented uh, April 1st, 2024, with appropriate uh everything else is notification. Uh yeah, she had April 1st on the other one though, too, but everything else, yeah, yeah. everything else is is. Uh, January 1st. Correct. Right. Everything else is January 1st. Uh, the $10. Ten dollar dollars fee. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you include that as well. Awesome. Everybody understand that motion? Any more discussion? Yeah. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And Jim, did you second that? Yes, I second. Thank you. Okay. Item number eight. We'll report. Yes, so every year we put together an annual report and present it to our solid waste management board. Um, and then there's a report out right now in draft format that we'd like to just go over with you very quickly here. It's all information that you've seen before through the year. So it's just a matter of uh, formally accepting and approving the report. Um, as usual, we start out with a table of contents. Um, we go through the Winnebago County Solid Waste Management Board, our purpose, our um, programs, um, our partnership with the Tri-County Program, and not a lot has changed on that part of it. Um, page two, we have our Solid Waste Management Board members and how we're, we're structured and organized. Table of organization for 2022. We go into details about the landfill and transfer station operations and our diversion programs. The updated information here is with our tonnages. We directed 203,900 tons of waste, 14,300 tons of recycling to our regional landfills and our track on recycling program. Um, 2022, we were still also working with UWO Oshkosh and directed 1,752 tons of ground feedstock material to their program. I go into some detail um, regarding our recycling services for our lamps, uh, our e-waste program, 244 pounds, uh, lamps, 5,786, um, and then just generally some of the other materials that we accept through our programs here, tires, appliances, motor oil, et cetera. Um, John updates the landfill gas collection utilization section here. Landfill gas revenues exceeded 1.1 million in 2022. Uh, recognizing that we have additional work, we just didn't seal up the hill, hill and walk away, that the uh, closed landfill does have environmentally, environmental monitoring and maintenance responsibilities or things we need to do with that. Uh, household hazardous waste. Uh, 2022, we had uh, 3,000, about 3,000 pounds put into our product exchange room. 1,032 customers and 44,000 pounds collected. So it was a very successful year. Uh, I have a little information on it regarding our rechargeable batteries to try to get the information out for anybody who may look at this that they should be putting their recyclable batteries in a drop off program and not in their waste or recycling uh, containers. Um, we still participate with the Sharps Disposal Program, it's a partnership where we help fund the um, Sharps collections at Roundy's Pick and Save Pharmacies in Winnebago County. We have one in Nina and one in Oshkosh. We collected 1,040 pounds of medical Sharps. 
We introduced a new program for holiday string light recycling in 2021 and expanded on it in 2022. So we had 996 pounds of string lights that were collected in this drop-off program and proper, properly recycled. And we had quite a few new uh, uh, communities signed on in 2022. So each one of the communities listed there, there are signing municipalities and each one had at least one collection been at their facility for uh, like a two month period in between 2022 and 23. We also, um, added a used cooking oil program where customers can bring in used cooking oil and uh, pour it into this uh, container in the back of our facility. Um, we had a pretty good year with 380 gallons of cooking oil collected. There has been demand through hazardous waste in the past and um, it, to, it is not a hazardous waste. All it needs to do is, is be dry or absorbed and then it can go in your regular trash, but this gives people an outlet that they can get rid of it without going through that bother and it's recycled. Um, in 2022, uh, Jessica, our um, education educator, did some municipal recycling audits. And this is a summary of the information she presented to the board. Um, I don't remember what month it was, but it was in late 2022. Um, just gave a highlight as to how our, the participating communities were doing with the recycling collections, how much contamination was coming in, and what types of contamination to help them get that information out to their uh, residents to, to really encourage people to, to look up guidelines that they don't know and, and make sure that the trash is going in the trash and the recycling is going in the recycling. We have a short write-up on our partnership with UW Oshkosh and what they do with the yard waste feedstock that they that were receiving from us. Um, and then nearly 16,000 tons of yard waste went through, of well, our yard waste went to UW Oshkosh in 2022. Uh, financial reports. This is information that was presented to the board over the summer. So it's just a comparison 2022 versus 2021. Uh, continues with the retained earnings summary and then uh, just a wrap up of our tonnage, waste, and recycling. And the back cover. <clears throat> so, with this, uh, I guess, brief uh, summary, we're asking uh, for the Solid Waste Management Board to um, accept the report as it is presented and um, then we'll make it available on our website, PDF format, and if people would like hard copies of it, we can put it right Oh, yeah. Uh, is there any uh, available provision uh, to add a footnote somehow to this report uh, to indicate that the UW Biogas uh, partnership uh, ended on a particular date? I don't, I don't know. This is a would summary be, of 2022. Yeah. So it would be this year. 2023 would, report. That, right. Yeah. It wouldn't, wouldn't be appropriate to, to add it into this. No. Historically, if changes were made, we did not add it into the into the like the 2022 report. We wouldn't have put it in that. We would put it into the 2023 report. Okay. But yes, it will be commented on in the 2023 report. Okay. Ooh. Did you have something? Don't yeah. Your first one. Uh, page three, the bottom of page three. <laughs> and this little problem. That's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, uh, right about in the middle of the page where it says two two hundred and three thousand nine hundred tons of waste and fourteen thousand three hundred tons of SSR. Yes. Why can't we just put in what SSR means? It is right. Here. right up there. Is it okay? Oh, all right. I'm sorry. I didn't notice that. Oh, that's I just okay. thought. What SSR? Sorry. That's okay. Um, Kathy, remind me in the past, have we made hard copies of this and distributed them in within the county somewhere? Um <clears throat> I would say five to six years ago, we would print off enough copies for our solid waste management board and then send 42 or 50 copies down for, for the um supervisors. Okay. Um, for the county board, um, but 
in the past couple of years, we would print up maybe a half a dozen and we'd stay with the air. Well, <laughs> that's, that's, I, I would agree. My, again, I couldn't remember if we talked about this or not. I mean, this is the kind of thing, even if you had a handful to go to each library, to have on tables at city hall, you know, at every city hall, every yeah. village hall has sort of the vestibule where they've got stuff. This stuff is, if you're sitting around waiting 15 minutes yeah. or you're at a library, libraries are all about information. This stuff yeah. is is really good information that people don't know. It's important. We're trying to get the word out about what, because every, every person in this county is affected by what happens here. And in terms of like the, the Christmas light mm -hmm. thing, I'll be willing to bet 80% of people don't know anything about that, right? So I just, the more we can, and, and local libraries for sure are at least a, a good place. And if we have to print, you know, pay some money to print some, um, I still think there's value there. So I don't know if anyone else has any thoughts on that, but I, I like that idea. I can come up with a count and then um, we'll do a print and distribute out to our, our libraries within our county yep. and um, I'll get a copy out, a hard copy out to all our municipal offices. There you go. Okay. Um, to get, for a start sure. and, and sure. Can certainly I can speak with the new educator that I have started on Monday to see if she has any other ideas. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you would you send a, a hard copy to the board as well? Absolutely. The solid waste management board, or yes. oh. yeah, I'll dump on that 36 copies for the board. Yeah, I think typically we'll email it to the clerk and have ask, them distribute. What do you guys do there? So, um, that's something else. So. <laughs> It'll come to me later. Okay, better come to you pretty quick. <laughs> 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 so are you looking for a motion to I'm looking for a motion to accept this. I'll report. make a motion that we accept this report. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion, motion carried. Future agenda item. Enrollable. Enrollable. And we can certainly put it on there, but if 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 John and Adam don't have time to talk, mm -hmm. there won't be anything to come up, but we can certainly yeah. put it there. So we I'm sure he'll ask for a recap of how the meeting went. He'll probably watch the video too, but um certainly um I don't I don't know what it would be on the schedule for the 20th, but certainly early January, early right. Just as soon as there's say put it on the as soon as there's something to talk about. Yeah, yeah right. As exactly. soon as there's information, we want to yeah. we don't want that to just die. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh I was looking forward for a discussion on this theme. That will, should be at the next meeting. Uh are we having a meeting this time? Another one? We had, the that, we had indicated on that at the last meeting that we would have it for the next meeting. And I, and yeah. the, the girls just said that it'll be on the 20th. Well, Paul, yeah. um, John, John has been out with, with his mom with family medical leave. So unfortunately, there was a family emergency late last week, I and he has been working yeah. on it. Um, and I know he was planning on having something this meeting, um, but unfortunately, um, things came up, and, and he's been occupied with, with family and children. Mm -hmm. Um, and as we said, I know this is very recent, very raw, but I would like something maybe in first quarter, um, first month of. Uh, uh, 2024, something we need. I believe we need to permanently honor Pat O'Brien yes. by naming something. We did kind of answer that. Exactly what I yep. did. Yep, yep, yep. So let's. It has to start here, by the way. Yep. And then it goes to facilities once we. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's exactly where I was going with it. Let's put yeah. that on sooner the better. And this guy is the perfect one to push that through. <laughs> <laughs> yep. did, did you hear what Mike said? He's said that somewhere along the line, we have to figure out a way of naming something after Pat O'Brien. Oh, and uh, 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 they're thinking of this conference room, 
the addition on this building. And my suggestion is that when it comes to naming buildings after somebody, you are the person that can get that push through the county board. Right. So um, right. I dreamt about that. Yeah. <laughs> you, you didn't watch how the Dave Albright building got pushed oh, through, oh but Paul oh, was I believe it. I believe pushing downhill the whole yeah. way. So how about the city work in concrete? Yes. Yep. Yep. So well, maybe second meeting in January or whatever. Yep. Well we'll just wait for the board to get to hold of the name some of the <laughs> there you go. Well, motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay, motion to adjourn. It's a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I did not hate Jim, but I, I, was, <laughs> I got some roadblocks thwarted by 